raising the minimum wage doesn't work. Unless your goal is to raise prices, lose jobs, and hurt the very same businesses that you rely on to employ people. Each city or state that has given in to the Fight for 15 crowd is a case study in how this works, and the results are rolling in. And yet, somehow, people keep acting as if the laws of economics can just magically be repealed just so long as you use the right set of buzzwords. <laughs> Seattle, D.C., New York, and San Diego, to name a few, have all suffered a downturn in job growth since their minimum wage increases, demonstrating that the most prominent effect of minimum wage laws isn't that wages go up, it's that companies stop hiring new employees. For every 10% increase in minimum wage, there is a 1-3% to decrease in employment of low-skilled workers in the short run and an even bigger decrease in the long run. In fact, a 2012 study found that New York's 2004 wage hike resulted in a 20-22% to reduction in employment for less skilled workers. Young adults and minority populations were the hardest hit. Economists out of Trinity and Miami universities estimate that California will lose about 400,000 jobs by 2022 due to a higher minimum wage, though they warn that that's a conservative estimate. New research out of New York shows that after raising the minimum wage to $15, the city experienced its sharpest decline in restaurant jobs since 9-11. The minimum wage hikes in New York City forced the closure of the very coffee shop that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez worked at as her claim to working class fame, and yet she too calls for a federal $15 minimum wage completely oblivious to what it does to local economies. But hey, the thousands of lost jobs and closed businesses are totally worth it, so long as someone somewhere has an extra dollar in their paycheck. So let's take a closer look at what a $15 minimum wage actually does for its workers. Let's start with Seattle, since the city already did its own study showing what happens when you raise the minimum wage. The current minimum wage in Seattle for businesses with 500 employees or more is $16 an hour, while any business smaller than that is required to pay $15. If a small business also pays for your medical benefits, then they can get away with $12 an hour, but only if they can prove that that other $3 is going to health insurance. This all seemed great and peachy keen at first, except that already within the first couple years, smaller businesses began cutting hours, firing workers, putting off new hiring, or reducing their business hours altogether in order to keep afloat. Hey, that wasn't supposed to happen! According to the study, the costs to lower wage workers outweighed the benefits by a ratio of 3 to 1. Overall, the average minimum wage worker lost $125 per month. About the only people who benefited from this wage hike were the people who were already making $19 an hour or more. Many small businesses cut their unskilled workforce in favor of expanding their skilled workforce in an effort to make enough profits to make up for the increase in minimum wage. After all, skilled workers likely already know the job, have the skills for the job, and can start right away on day one without much training. An employer isn't going to want to pay someone $15 an hour if they can't also produce at least $15 an hour of value. It also resulted in a decrease in jobs available for minimum wage workers and those new to the workforce, forcing many of these people to look outside Seattle. But supporters say that this shouldn't deter governments from raising the minimum wage because young people will instead stay in school, eventually get degrees, and then end up in a better labor market, while minimum wage workers will stay in dead-end jobs with no upward mobility, so we might as well let them work a little less for the same amount of money. Damn! Clearly, these people don't have much confidence in the crowd they're trying to help. But hey, that's just Seattle, right? There's no way that legislators and lobbyists would keep pushing a $15 minimum wage if other cities had similar results, right? Right? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? 
Starting on December 31st of last year, all New York businesses with 11 or more employees had to raise wages from $13 an hour to $15, and the tipped minimum went from $8.65 to $10, a 16% increase for a food industry that typically operates on profits of only 2 to 6%. For some restaurants, this might translate into an extra $600,000 or more in operating costs. Oh, you know, I just have that lying around. That is a big budget shift that a lot of small mom and pop places can't afford. For this reason, restaurants are often seen as the ground zero for the consequences of minimum wage increases. In fact, a pair of Harvard Business School researchers found that an average three and a half star restaurant has an additional 14% chance of closing for every dollar the minimum wage goes up. A survey conducted by the New York City Hospitality Alliance found that over 75% of both full and limited service restaurants reduced employee hours leading up to the wage change. 36% of full service restaurants eliminated jobs in 2018 and another 47% will continue to eliminate jobs this year. Limited service restaurants like your standard pizza shop, Chinese takeout, or McDonald's reported similar numbers but with even more job cuts. For big franchises like Red Robin, this means firing all your bus boys. For McDonald's, Applebee's, and Chili's, this means ditching servers and cashiers in favor of kiosks and table-side tablets. They took our jobs! They took our jobs! They took our jobs! But not everyone has that option. And so about 15% of restaurants were forced to close as a direct result of those wage hikes. Naturally, employment growth in the food industry tanked to a historic low of less than 1%. After all, it's hard for an industry to grow when it's being choked out by the economic equivalent of hazardous waste. But Brando's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. But that's just how these wage changes are affecting the workers. Close to 90% of restaurants stated that they would also be raising menu prices, which unfortunately has led to decreases in business. Over 50% said that they would be reworking their menu to incorporate cheaper ingredients and cut costs. Others are also cutting the details, like ditching candles on tables, getting rid of phone systems, trying to limit electricity use, or reducing space in between tables in order to try and just cram in more customers. Not eating out? Doesn't matter. A study of grocery stores found that for every 10% increase in the minimum wage, stores raised their prices by an average of 0.2% within the first three months after legislation is passed. These price increases offset between 3 and 12% of nominal income gains for every household. DC didn't get through their $15 minimum wage unscathed either. While surrounding suburbs continue to see growth in their job markets, restaurants alone lost 1,400 jobs in the first six months of 2016, which was the largest loss in 15 years. It might not seem like much, but that's an average loss of eight jobs a day. Just like New York, growth in the food industry ground to a complete halt and, like Seattle, areas outside the city boomed, adding 7,300 restaurant jobs. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. As a matter of fact, the $15 minimum wage is so great that restaurant workers in D.C. actively rallied against it, instead preferring to stay at a tipped minimum because it would have cost them money and it would have cost them jobs. The lost jobs and higher cost results were also replicated in L.A. County when the county commissioned a survey of 1,000 businesses as part of a report on the state's proposed minimum wage boost. 96% of businesses with minimum wage employees said they would be raising their prices to cover the cost. The American Action Forum looked at the 12 states and D.C. that passed minimum wage laws in 2018 and found a loss of 261,000 jobs in those states. 
By the time those states are brought up to their final wage increments, AAF projects a loss of 1.7 million jobs. When taking into account wage hikes all the way back to 2012, those wage laws will have cost 2.6 million jobs. That means that 2.6 million low-wage, underskilled workers, those same workers who supporters say need help because they'll never progress, will have had their jobs cut. How are legislators planning to fix this? Generally, in two ways. Usually, legislators just push for more minimum wage hikes to offset the consequences of previous minimum wage hikes. But New York has a new and more creative solution. Instead of saying, oh crap, maybe we should stop with this minimum wage thing, legislators are saying, well, let's pass a law so that restaurants and fast food joints can't fire people without a government-approved reason. Seriously. Of course, the examples of fired workers given in this supporting New York Times article are all people who swore at fellow employees, missed shifts, or were often late. Still, these workers all claimed that they had been fired for no reason. And so we need a law saying that they can't get fired without an appeal or arbitration. That, my friends, will fix everything. So you have to ask yourself, with all of this research, between the job losses, the price increases, and the hour cuts, if the fight for 15 is really worth it. That's it for your mini economics lesson of the day. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this whole fight for 15. And if you want to help support my channel in other ways, you can do so over at Patreon or through one-time donation through PayPal or crypto. And it doesn't even have to be $15. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching and helping me to spread the message of liberty.